I ran into a friend recently whom I hadn't seen in a long time. At first, I didn't recognize him. And some of that had to do with the time between meetings. But more of it had to do with context. The last time I'd seen him was in California, in the Sierra Nevada foothills. This recent meeting was at a town called Goshen, Virginia. He and I were walking into buildings adjacent to one another and caught each other's eye. And then we did that thing, just kind of stared at each other quizzically and awkwardly for a few moments until he, his name's Mike, said, McRoberts? There were hugs and high fives and that guy hug with the clasped palms in the middle, the whole thing. I'm guessing you've had similar moments that you see someone or something that you know well enough, but in a particular context, it's thrown off throws off your expectations. This is in the wrong place. That can't be, but it is. Is that them? Here? No, they can't be. Because they belong somewhere else. Right? Part of what's been exposed in my own religious training is that that happens to me in relationship to God somewhat regularly. An encounter or a moment of clarity is, is cast into some kind of substantial doubt because, well, God doesn't go here God goes certain places, belongs certain places, at certain times, and sometimes in certain ways. Which isn't to say that those places and those spaces and those times or those ways are in and of themselves problematic. More so, they become problematic when I try to stuff the entirety of my expectant longing for the divine into those spaces alone. They can't hold it, so they burst. What if the spaces and the places we call sacred were less like consumer packaging and more like training grounds, always pointing beyond themselves, humbly aware of their transience. May it be so that I learned to see the divine there, goodness, truth, beauty, all of it, that I learned to see the divine in these spaces, these places, and in these ways so that I can recognize the divine, divine love, divine movement, divine presence, everywhere else. So that 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. hour on a Sunday, or those specific words in that specific prayer, or that specific chord progression, or the specific genre of music or art, all these are fine, but, and also they're small. They're so small. Alexander Schmiemann in his book For the Life of the World criticized what he called the religion of this world, suggesting that too much of it has called this one small space sacred, and in doing so, the way we've done it, we have rendered the majority of the rest of life and the experience of life plain, ordinary, other, or even bad. That's terrible religion. And if those of us at the helm of contemporary religious machinery are actually honest with ourselves, we have to admit that this is the case, at least to some degree, if not to a large degree, because we've made it that way. If I'm a gatekeeper to your spiritual and religious experience, or if something I've created is the place and the way that you see the divine, then you need me, and you need what I make, and I get to keep my job and my power. That's a heck of a temptation. Which takes me all the way back to the poetic, prophetic challenge issued by the writers of Genesis, who, in the third chapter, exposed the core human temptation to be like God, knowing good and evil. It is a temptation that, in part, is about setting the parameters of reality for myself and deciding where things should go, including the divine. But God is who, what, and how God is wherever God is. Just like my friend Mike is Mike wherever Mike is. And getting to know him where and when and how I did should mean that when I discover him on the other side of the country, I recognize Mike as Mike. May it be so for you and I in relationship to one another, and may it be so for you and I in relationship to the divine, and may it be so for those of us who continue to forge pathways for people to encounter God that we would not be gatekeepers. We would set the stage for folks to come into an encounter with the divine by which in which they would learn to see God however God shows up, wherever God shows up.